Thank you, Vitre. Aren't you glad to be in Charleston today? I know I am. Our market is on fire. Our growth is dynamic. The real estate industry is booming. We all know that our inventory is increasing and has so since 2013. And while we, and while we have added a million and a half square feet of space, our vacancy rate continues to drop. We have remained below 10% for the last five years, a true indicator of a healthy office market. And throughout our region, similar characteristics, vacancy rates dropping, while land values are increasing and rental rates are increasing as well. In the southeast, we compare similarly to our competitive set of cities nearby. But how did we get here? How many of you all were here 23 years ago when the Navy base closed? Remember, everyone thought our economy was going to tank. We were a two-legged stool. We had military and tourism. Well, we didn't choke. We rallied together as a region. We formed new alliances. The CRDA was born. And we went out and recruited new industries, new business to our region. And we created a well-balanced four-legged chair, adding advanced manufacturing and healthcare to our, in our military and tourism base. We're all very familiar with the tourism attractiveness accolades that are continuously in the news, as they should be. Our other industries now are getting noticed noticed around the world. And it's who that's watching that is significant. These are industry watching leaders, Brookings, Milkins, Forbes. They are, they are putting us in the headlines today in, in the worldwide circle that we have never enjoyed before. They are commenting on our export growth. They're noticing our trends. And they are highlighting continuously what we all know well as the port as our key asset, key asset. And this growth in advanced manufacturing, particularly aeros aerospace and automotive, is powering an impressive multiplier effect, creating more jobs and, and obviously the demand for more office space. In fact, in the last 12 months alone, 45% of all of our jobs added were in the office categories of information, uh, financial activities, professional and business services. And we are growing four times faster than the rest of the country. This, this workforce is also very young. We used to be where people just wanted to live and work. Today, we have jobs. And of the 34 people moving here today, we are attracting the next generation workforce. Two thirds are in their prime workforce years with a skilled labor set of, of valuable resources and the medium age is 36 years old. Businesses are taking note, investors are taking note, and developers are recognizing that our product needs to change and will continue to adapt to this younger workforce demographic. Mixed use communities with amenity rich environments with a true sense of community have proven to be in the highest demand and holding the um, highest values. And our office characteristics are changing. Technology, as we know, is influencing our, our work styles and our lifestyles in ways that we aren't even aware of in terms of the future. Our, our office size is becoming more efficient and the square footage requirement today is, is half the size it was even five years ago. Location preferences have become very important, much more important to business as they, they are a retention and uh, an attraction and retention uh, component that had never been part of our dynamic in, in the past. <coughs> Developers are responding to these new tr trends and they're building this type of product in our market and will continue to build it. <coughs> And they're bringing ideas from other, other places around the country that are a little bit further ahead of the curve than we are. 
And these new ideas are, are in place even in our, in our last year's delivery. 1505 King Street, Pacific Box and Crate. Who has been there recently to the workshop? I felt 10 years younger for the hour I was there enjoying lunch. <laughs> One, uh, 111 uh, Coleman Boulevard, embedded in the Mount Pleasant community of, of wonderful restaurants and entertainment venues that are close by for walking to, drive, walk, um, riding your bicycle. And then on Daniel Island, 880 Island Drive, Again, in the heart of Daniel Island, within a few minutes from walking over to Volvo Stadium. And moving, a, moving ahead in the next three years, we're going to see more of this type of product, mixed use rich, in, amenity rich environments. Where we are today, West Edge, this is just part of a 2.5 million square foot mixed use environment. 22 West Edge will be in the first phase. And then there's Jasper nearby. They will build their own apartments and retail. And into the Upper Peninsula, 45 Romney will be joined by Flagship 3, where we're already seeing a very popular tech corridor emerging. Restaurants exist, more apartments and more um, hotels will be built to surround it. In Mount Pleasant, Ferry Wharf will be built, a part of a huge mixed-use development, which will include hundreds of thousands of square feet of hospitality, more, more office space, retail, all within five minutes from downtown, and walking distance and biking distance from the waterfront of Mount Pleasant. And Black Baud. Daniel Island has served Black Baud so well that they have now made a huge commitment, and in their first phase of their new campus will only be half of what they plan to have over the next 20 years. Moving into North Charleston, a product that's very similar to the Pacific Box and Crate will be delivered, the Garco Mill, with a, with a um, food hall very similar to the workshop to be incorporated. Very close to Park Circle, where, where restaurants are, are appealing to all ages, in, including me. And then in Somerville, we will have more office space built in the new town center at Nexton. This town center will have more office space, more retail, and, and be a part of what is already a very popular mixed-use community. And next, the bus rapid transit system will influence real estate development patterns more than any other single initiative ever launched in our community. The real estate patterns along this route will open up real estate development and revitalization opportunities in the neighborhoods and in the commercial areas all along the Somerville to Charleston route. This was, is just the spine. In the future, there will be many more routes taking it out into the rest of the community. This will transform our region. Thank you very much for having me.